Hey, have you ever wanted to start dropshipping, but because of your small budget, you either didn't want to start or you felt afraid of losing all your money? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you how I was able to start dropshipping with additional $2,000 per month in budget to build the dropshipping business and none of it was my own money. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Jacob Wikowski and here's what I decided to do. I decided to take the entire 20 and 22 and devote all my time, all my money and energy into building a profitable, hopefully, dropshipping stores to see if it is still possible to make money online with dropshipping and if yes, then how much time and money it really takes for a complete newbie like myself with zero experience to get there. Now on this channel, I'm documenting the entire journey, giving you the raw, unedited, uncovered or whatever content so that you can see what it really takes to build this type of business and if it's even possible. So at the end of the year, we can both then decide whether this is something we want to continue doing or maybe it's better to take our time and money and put it somewhere else. So listen, in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I've done so far up to today. So it's 26th of January, which means that I have been doing this project for about three weeks now. During that time, I've tested multiple different products and I'll tell you exactly what I tested, what I did, what I didn't do, what worked, what didn't work, how much money I made or lost, how much sales I made, if any, and basically everything else that has been going on in the past three weeks. But here's the bonus for you. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how I was able to secure additional $2,000 per month for this entire year to build dropshipping businesses. And none of it was my own money. What? Now, it wasn't a loan. It wasn't any type of um, investment scheme that I need to pay back. It was literally no risk, $2,000 per month that's not my money that I can use to try and build this dropshipping store. Okay, so let me give you a quick recap of what I have been doing for the past three weeks. Now, this is going to be a brief recap. So if you want to find out in more details what I have been doing from day one in each week, then make sure to watch previous videos. But very quickly, I started off by investing in this paid dropshipping course from the a guy named Biaheza. Um, I used his product research methods and I found a weird new style hula hoop fitness tool type of thing that allowed people to lose weight. And I decided to use that and try to sell this as I have seen other stores doing this successfully. So I used Biaheza's course in order to build the entire store and, and basically get everything off the ground. Now it turned out in short, and this is my own opinion, that his course was a little bit outdated and nothing really worked. There was, there has been a lot of changes since um, he created this course. So I ended up asking for my money back because I didn't see the value in this course, unfortunately. However, later on, I came across this completely free, over eight hours, a dropshipping course that has been created specifically for the year 2022 from the guy named Ecom King. And it turned out the content was amazing, very in-depth. And uh, as I thought, it only confirmed that Behezus course was outdated because what they have been teaching me inside their free course has been a basically completely different type of knowledge see what turned out is that doing dropshipping nowadays is a lot more competitive. So you really have to be on top of your game when it comes to creating your website or, or your store and your landing pages, product pages and everything else. So after going through this entire course, I decided to start again uh, with a completely new product. So what I did is um, I tried to research a new product that I wanted to promote. But in all, in all honesty, this was so stressful for me. For some reason, researching new products using all of the methods that I found on YouTube, for some reason, it was very stressful and time consuming uh, activity for me because I didn't know what to choose. Like none of the products that I have seen that were doing well 
were the products that in my eyes would do well. And for that reason, I didn't feel like I wanted to choose those type of products to promote. And I was just going through tons of contents, tons of websites, tons of pro products that probably a lot of them would be winners. But for some reason, I just something inside me didn't allow me to choose the right product and go with it. So after this entire struggle, I decided to simply invest in one of those um, product winning websites, basically that provide you with winning products on daily basis. Um, and all you have to do is just choose one of the already winning products and go with that one. So I decided to invest in Ecom Hand. Ecom Hand is only, I think, 20 or 30 dollars a month so it's not that much but they provide you with new products every single day with all the statistics data and ads and basically everything that you need to to see whether this is the product that you want to promote or not you have all the content there and stuff like that and that's what i have been doing so i did that and i found this usb car charger that basically allows you to charge four devices simultaneously at the same time um and it also has a fast charging sort of feature built in as well. After doing a little bit more research and going through Amazon, uh, AliExpress, I have seen that people did really like this product and they wanted this product. So I decided to build the entire store around this product. But here's what I did. See, the mistake I did previously was that in my opinion, that was a mistake. We'll find out in the future. But it was that I have built the entire store surrounding this one product. So this was one product store. Now, why was that bad? Well, the reason that was bad is because now if I want to test another product, I have to create completely new store, which takes time. And especially that after going through this eight hours um, uh, course that I have went through from Ecom King, um, I now know that the stores that we're building have to be really high quality. So this takes time. So if I had to build a brand new store for each product I want to test every time, this would take a lot of time. And I realize it takes time to build a business. But I also realized that you need to be smart at making choices when running a business. So what I decided to do is to make sure that this time when I build stores, I build them in a way so that they are very niched, niched down. They're not general stores with tons of products from different niches, but they are like general stores, but more niched down. So let me, let's, let's actually jump to my computer and I'll show you exactly what I've built and I'll explain everything I've done. Okay, so we are at my computer now and let me show you what I mean by saying I'm creating basically a niche store. So. What I decided to do, like I told you, I found this little um, charger uh, that I wanted to promote. I gave it a unique name. Uh, I purchased a new domain named Leap Charge. Um, now, how I found this name is very simple. There is this really cool website called Nameflix or Nameflix. And basically what it allows you to do is when you type in different uh, phrases, it will generate some ideas for you. So you basically select if you want the name to be short, medium style, long name, uh, what style of the name, is it brandable, compound, it gives you some examples like FedEx, Instagram, Apple, Amazon, etc., etc. You click on generate and basically it will give you tons of different ideas. Now, a lot of them are already taken, unfortunately, uh, but you can, it gives you an inspiration of what to do. Now, in my case, um, as you can see, it said leap charge, but leapcharge.com was already taken. So what I decided to do is to go with leap dash charge instead. It was available and there you go. Leap charge. It is nice. So I created, as you can see, uh, comparing to most of the stores or the previous store that I've shared with you in the previous videos, this one is a lot more unique, right? It doesn't give you this Shopify um, default sort of type of theme um, uh, a store. It, it's really unique store. And I used to, to build this type of store, I used an app called Ecom Solid Theme and Page Builder. It's free for, I think the first 
30 days or maybe it's even free until the X amount of sales. I can't remember, but I know it's free to start with. So before you actually get some sales rolling, um, you can use it to test products, right? So here's what I've done. I created the product page looking just like this. Um, it looks really nice on mobile as well. Uh, looks like this. So it's, it's very unique. I gave it a unique name, some benefits, and then I created really nice description. Now, these headlines are actually images. I created them in Photoshop. You could do that in Paint if you wanted to or on Canva or whatever. Um, and I basically just put an image here. So it looks like it's a basically highlighted text, but it's not, it's just an image, but looks really cool. Um, and then I added some pictures, a little bit of text. So that's what I did. Um, and let me go back to, uh, to the point. So why I'm saying like what I could have done is build the entire store around only this product, right? And then if I wanted to promote something else, I would have to build this again. And let me tell you, it takes time to build something like this, especially that you have all those different menus, menus, you have all the policies, policies and everything else, headers, it, it takes time. So what I decided to do is to focus just on car electronics, right? Like electronic gadgets, for cars. So now I know that I don't have to rebuild this page if I find any product that's car related. I can just slap it into this store and and, and just create a product page for this store, uh, for, for this product and then run ads. I don't have to recreate everything from the start. It looks really cool and I don't have to do anything else. Just leave it as it is. Now, what happens in case if, you know, the product that I'm testing, which are this case was this leap charge, this, this charger, what happens if it doesn't work and I find a product from a different niche? Well, what I would do, I wouldn't keep this uh, store open because I would then have to pay for all the apps that I'm using. I would have to pay for the Shopify plan itself and it would like, it wouldn't make sense. So what I would do and what I've done with most of the, with the other store that I had is I would go to settings go to plans and I would simply deactivate it. So when I deactivate the store, they don't charge me anymore, but they keep the data for over two years um, or not over, but for about two years. So you can always come back to this store in one month, three months, four months, five months for, from now. Now, I don't know whether if I come back after a couple of months, if I will have to pay back like up to the month, right? So pay back for all the months that I didn't use it or if it will just restart at a, you know, $29 per month. I'm not sure. But in my opinion, because I didn't use it, I wouldn't use it, it was it would be deactivated and I probably don't have to pay at all. And if I want to reactivate it, I probably just need to pay another $29 to reactivate the plan and then obviously pay for all the apps that are installed that has no longer a free trial period which I can leave with because even if this would amount to a hundred dollars or so, then it would save me tons of time. And I already have a domain name. Everything is already connected to Facebook. It would save me a lot of time, right? If I can just reactivate this story, if I have a product that depends to these, to this niche. So that's exactly what I've done. Um, and uh, I was basically promoting this for about just, just, under a week, the first couple of days, I didn't get any sales. So if we go to the orders, I started promoting it maybe actually 18th. So I did that thing. I actually received the first sale on the first day right here. Um, then I didn't receive a sale for two, for a day. So I didn't receive a sale on Wednesday and bear in mind, I was spending hundred dollars a day on ads. And then I, and then what I decided to do is to work on the description even more because it didn't look like this to start with. It was a little bit more scrappy if you like. And then what I decided to do after like, I didn't get the sale, um, the, on, on the, the second day, which was the 19th, I decided to really rework it. So I build it to like the, the way you see it right now. And this is where things started to take off because Friday I received uh, another sale. Then Saturday I received the sale 
And then Sunday, I received three sales. Then Monday, I received three sales again. And one of them was two quantities. So I, I sold four units, right? It was two, two units. One, one sale was two units. So basically, I was making sales um, fr from Sunday. Uh, it looked pretty good because I had three sales here. Monday, four units, three sales. And then going to Tuesday, which was yesterday, maybe, was it? Um, let me see, because I know I have. So that was Tuesday, so it was Sunday, yes. So going to Tuesday, which was yesterday, I decided to stop selling this product. Let me tell you why. Simply because, yes, it did give me some sales and I found some winning um, ad sets for this product, but I was still paying about 30 here and $40 here to make a sale worth $19. So I was losing money on this one. Um, and originally I thought to myself, okay, I can now ditch this product and move on to the next one and start building everything from scratch or I can work on this one because it's already making sense because I can see people like it and maybe I can improve something. Maybe I can run better ads. Maybe I can improve the website a little bit to eventually get it to at least break even, right? So I don't lose money, I don't make money. And then my way of thinking was that this is the front end product, right? This is the product that people see for the first time when they land on my store. They purchase it because obviously I have some data saying that they do. And then I would offer them upsells. So after they purchase this, I would then show them different other products, hoping that they would purchase the other products where I would eventually make my profit, right? So I wouldn't worry about the profit up on, on the front end when people were basically buying this product I could even lose a couple of dollars on this product as long as people would later on come back and purchase the additional products I have without me advertising to them, right? So that would be pure profit. So that was my original way of thinking. And that's why I kept running ads for, for an entire week, even though I was losing money, because I wanted to work on this product to get it to break even to where I'm not making money, but also not losing money and then offer uh, people uh, other products, other stuff where I would make money. That was my way of thinking. But you know what? It came to yesterday where I had another sale ringing on my phone, right? Yeah, like when you install if, um, Shopify app, it gives you this kitching, this, this money coming in sound, right? And it gives you a great boost of happy hormones, happy feeling, right? It, it sounds, it feels really good when you get the sale. So when I was getting the first sale, second sale, and sales even on Sunday, I felt really good. I was like, yes, this starts to work. Something is happening. But then on Monday, I get this sound again, and then again, and then again. But I started realizing that each time I hear this sound, I'm not making money. I'm actually losing money. I'm paying more to hear this sound rather than earning something from it. So then I came to realization that, you know what? I don't want to have a store where every time I hear this sales sound, I'm thinking that I'm actually losing money and I just keep my fingers crossed, hoping that people will buy upsells in order for me to be profitable. I don't want that. It's, it's pretty stressful. It, it kills this vibe and, and, and the feeling of having a, a good prospering um, Shopify store. So I decided that I'm not going to do this anymore. What I decided to do is to continue to look for the product that allows me to be profitable from the first sale and then offer people upsells and then off figure out what other products I can give them and make more money then. But I want to be profitable from the first sale. I don't want to just break even or lose money a little bit in order to build email list and then sell other products. I will still do that, but I want to be profitable from the beginning. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so based on that, I decided to promote a different product. But again, this product will still be in this niche in the niche of cars. So I don't have to recreate everything. I just need to create a new product page and start running ads because everything is already connected. Pixel is already working and everything else is running all good. I just need to create new product page. Now, 
when you see those products, I didn't run those products. I didn't run a separate advertising to those products. I used those products as upsells. So after people purchased this, this um, charger, I, I shown them these two products in the hope that they will, would purchase them. Obviously they didn't. Um, I, maybe I, at some point I would find the product that they would purchase, that most people would purchase after buying this one. But again, it will take time before I find it. And every time I'm selling this product on the front end, I'm losing money. I don't want that. So I found a different product, which basically I'm, I'm editing a video for it right now. So I, I might play it for you a little bit. Um, it's basically uh, this little, um, I'll show you. It's this little, like an arm rest that also allows you there you go. There you go. There's music, so I want to stop it. So this is an armrest that also allows you to charge your phone wire like wirelessly. It has a wireless charger and you can put keys and whatever else in it. It looks good. There is a lot of people buying it on Amazon, on Amazon and uh, AliExpress right now. A lot of great reviews, a lot of stars. So I just want to give it a go, especially that it is within this niche. So again, I can just build a simple... Uh, product page and run it and it will take me about an hour or so. However, if I wanted to choose, you know, build an entire store around it again, it would take me a couple of days. Um, so that's what I have been doing. Now, in the meantime, to speed up the process, what I will do is once I build the, pay the product page for this new product and start running ads, what I will do in the meantime I found another product on Ecom Hand, like I said before, um, that uh, basically I'm going to start building a store around that product. And this product is uh, basically um, helping people who have knee pains, right? So this is a product that helps you to basically get rid of the pain in the knee, get a little bit more comfort and stuff like that. So in the meantime, I'm going to be building this store. So whenever I come across a product that is within this niche, like the wellness or healing people, healness niche, then I know that I can simply um, just add products onto this store. So this is what it looks so far. I only started editing it a little bit. I need to change all the pictures and everything else. I already have a name, Bod Hill. And I'll, I'll basically make it look very similar to this one, obviously different colors, but also like basically same layout. So best selling products. And then I can later on, if I'll have more products I want to test in this niche, in the, in the niche of uh, healing, if you like, or fitness or whatever, then I can come back here and just slap a new page in here because I know everything else is done. Everything else is connected. And that's how over time I'll be able to test more and more products that much faster, faster and faster each time, right? And again, at the time when I'm not using the store because I don't have products within that niche, what I'm going to do is simply go in and I'm going to deactivate the store for the time being until I find product that suits this niche. Then I'm going to reactivate the store, slap this new product there, run ads, job done. That's my plan. So having that in mind, let's see what I have done so far in terms of sales, how much money I spent, how much money I made and everything else. So like I was explaining to you right here, now th those yellow ones that you see where it says Jacob, we, this is me testing uh, the upsell, uh, the, the upsell app to see if I will be taken to the upsell page after purchasing, right? Just wanted to see if everything looks good. So those four sales is me, this doesn't count. Um, but basically aside from that, I made 11 sales, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Actually 10 sales, but 11 units because this guy purchased two units right, right here. So 11, uh, 10 sales, 11 units, right? Which in total uh, is, I'll tell you right now because I'm keeping everything here. In total, that's $205 in sales after uh, PayPal fees and PayPal fees in my case, because there are international payments is 4.89% plus 30 cents for each transaction. 
So that comes to $1.28 that I have to give to PayPal every time someone is paying me $19.99. So altogether, I made $205.84 based on those 11 units. Now, how much I spent so far? So, so far for this product only, I'm not counting what I told you in the previous video, in the previous product, with this product only. So far, I have spent $500 on Shopify, uh, on Shopify store, on domain names, because um, I, I purchased this domain plus, I purchased other domain um, that I wanted to use, uh, which I might in future change. Basically, this says leap charge which is only connected to like chargers and electronics. The other one I have is um, road jets, like road gadgets, road jets. So basically any gadgets for the car. I might change it in the future. Um, so that's what I uh, purchased. So domains, it says three domains because I think I've purchased one more domain, which basically will be for the new product that I'm, the, the Bod Hill uh, thing, right? But let, let's keep it here. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm trying to keep the entire profit loss and, and, and money coming in and coming out um, uh, spreadsheet up to date. So three uh, domains, two video uh, video ads from Fiverr, uh, from Fiverr um, guy who basically video editor. Uh, then Ecom Hand, which is what I told you. Ecom Hand is uh, a, a Pro, uh, website where you can find winning products. Then, as you can he hear, uh, see here, Hyros Ad Tracking Tool. This is, by the way, this is in Polish Zloty. This is my currency because I'm currently in Poland, uh, but it all is calculated in dollars at the end over here. So Hyros costs $349 per month, which is expensive tool and not everybody needs to use it. The reason I use it is because I know from my experience that Facebook ads tracking is way off. And sometimes you can find winning ad sets, winning ads, but Facebook will allocate the sales to completely different ad sets, different ads, different campaigns. And you might end up killing and stopping the campaign that really is profitable and working. And you might end up scaling the one that is not working, ruining everything for you. So that's that's just the reason why I decided to invest in Hyros because I know it will give me a good return on investment in the future when I start scaling. I don't know if I did make, make the good decision to invest it invest in it right away, but I think I did to be honest with you. So I'll, I'll kept it there. You don't have to invest in it, but I did. Then, as I said, Econ, Econ Hunt, and then Saturation Checker. This is an app that allows me to check the saturation um, level, like saturation for each product, whether it's untapped, competitive, saturated, what stores I can uh, are running this product or selling this product. As you can see, this uh, hot compress knee relaxing thing is untapped market. Uh, only two stores are selling it uh, so far. Um, and I found it by going to Ecom Hand. So it was probably a good investment. I'm going to test this product. We'll see how this is going to go. So far, in total, after stopping run, run, running ads for this hula hoop thing that I explained in the previous video, just for this um, product, for this charger thing, I spent in apps and basically softwares $500. And that's including Hyros. You don't have to buy Hyros. So for you, this could be a way less, like $155, right? But I, I did, so it's $499. Then I spent $673 in Facebook ads for this particular product. I sold 11 units, which totals $205. So in total, expenses, adding everything together for this particular product, Total expenses was $1,285 and I only made $205. So um, total loss $1,079 for this product. Now, again, if I didn't buy Hyros, that would be a lot less. If I didn't, like I told you, I made a mistake of um, trying, like running ads for this product, even though it was unprofitable, in the hope that I will make it break even and later on sell apps and stuff like that. In reality, I probably should have 
stopped this pro this this stopped the testing this product after three days. So ad spent would be like you know third of this, so two hundred dollars, right? Let's do two hundred dollars, which actually. Oh, let's change it here to, I don't know, let's say 900 zloty, which is about $200. Um, so then again, I would only lose $200 testing this product, which wouldn't be that bad. But I'm learning on my mistakes. At least now you'll know not to do that. Um, so that's that's the numbers for, for this um, charger thing. Now, let's add everything together. So as you can see um, here, I spent for Hyros. So as you can see, so far, my total loss is $1,709 in here for this charger. So let's place it here. Um, okay, it's, well, let's say 180 to make it easier. And then in the previous video, I also told you, um, gave you all the numbers. I told you how much I spent and stuff like that. I told you that I spent $647. You can go and check the video. Uh, I explained what I spent it on. Um, however, I received the refund from the dropshipping course from Yaheza because like I said, it was outdated. So he, they ended up giving me back their money or my money. Uh, so last product when I, that was testing, I lost $350. The second product, which is basically hula hoop. Hula hoop, right? And this is charger. So basically for hula hoop, I lost $350. For charger, I lost $1,080. So at this moment, it's third week. I made a lot of mistakes and I'm about one and a half thousand dollars um, at loss. Again, like I said, probably the only reason that is, is because I've invested in tools such as Hyros, because I didn't necessarily knew what I wanted to do in terms of this charger. Um, so there's a lot to it. It could be a lot less, but it is what it is. Like I said, I'm going to keep going and we'll see what's going to happen. So listen, let's get back to me explaining to you how you can get up to 2,000, 3,000, maybe more of additional budget for your dropshipping store without using your own money. Let's go. Okay, so you're wondering how you can get more budget for you to start your dropshipping journey a lot faster so you can grow quicker and you don't have to worry about losing all of your money, right? Now listen, I don't know if you remember or if you've watched my previous videos, but when I first started this project three weeks ago, I wanted to go with $50 per day budget, right? Which I would spend on ads, purely on ads. And then, which would which would add up to about $1,500 a month. Um, but I realized that there are other tools I need to buy and purchase, so costs started adding up. And on the second video, I told you that I'm going to try to scale down to $30 a day, right? Because I had to manage my budget. But I realized that for some people, even $30 a day could be too much. They might not have that much money. They might have only $5 a day budget, right? Or $10 a day or whatever your budget is. So I was thinking to myself, what can I do to increase my budget? Because I want to be able to spend $100 a day on testing this, these products, right? So I can really go fast. I can really make this entire project worthwhile, right? To, to bring it to speed so that you guys can see the results. I can see the results and let's see what's going to happen. But I knew I couldn't have or spend, I didn't have and I couldn't spend this much money out of my own pocket. So what I decided to do is to make a list of all, all the people who I knew had money and I knew that were interested in a sort of passive income or, or interested in starting a business, but either didn't have time or knowledge on how to do that. I made a list of those people and I decided to get in touch with those people, offering them to become a investors in my business. So here's how I went about it. I created entire spreadsheet on, uh, on, on Google, basically Google Sheets, explaining 
exactly what's going to happen over the next two years, or at least what I'm hoping it's going to happen. Now, the data I used was based on what I found on Google, based on what I found on like inside YouTube videos and everything else. And what I did then is I created basically a financial forecast of what I think I will be able to earn doing dropshipping. And inside this two years financial forecast, I said that the first year, first month, I'm going to lose all my money. Third, uh, second and third month, I also will lose all my money. So I planned no sales and I planned that I will lose all my money within the first three months, right? Or all my monthly budget in the first three months. Then month four, I on this spreadsheet plan that I'm going to make only about $250 in profit. So I'm going to break even on month four, which is probably very realistic, taking into account what other people basically achieved with their Shopify uh, dropshipping stores on YouTube. If that's true, what they are doing, you know, people are able to find winning products after like maximum after a month or so, um, which I'm getting close to that per period, but whatever, we'll see. Uh, so I should be able to do that. Within the first four months, I should be able to break even on the month four. Now, from then, I decided that I planned that I will find the month four is when I will find a winning product and then I'm going to scale it, start making more money over the month, right? And then I put to this in the spreadsheet explaining exactly how much money I'm going to make each month after that, how much money I'm going to spend on ads and basically having a predicted profit on the side, right? And then what I said, what I decided to do is to shoot a video explaining what's my project, what I'm working on, what profit I'm predicting to get uh, uh, based on 20% um, profit margin. So pretty low profit margin based on only $30 products. So if I was selling products for $30 and obviously I might be selling products that are more expensive, giving me even better return on investment and, and stuff like that. But I basically use the worst case scenario and I put on this spreadsheet everything that I'm going to spend and how much money I'm going to make year one and then year two, how much profit I'm expecting to get. Then I shoot the video explaining this entire spreadsheet and saying to the people that I wanted to contact that I'm planning to put $1,000 a month of my own budget from my own pocket, which is about $30 a day into this project. But I'm looking for investor who would put additional $2,000. So twice as much as I do into this project for one year. So for the entire 2022 and in return, I said, I'm going to give away 50% of all my profits. If I'll make any profits for two years. So year one and then year two. Now, based on this, I'm putting all the time into the business. So the investor doesn't have to put any time into this business. Only I'm putting the entire time into my business, into this business. I'm still putting my money in the business as well. All they have to do is to put their chunk of the money in the business in return for potential, you know, in return for 50% of potential profits, right? They do that for the year. So both me and the investor are putting money in every single month for a year into the business. And then after a year, the investor doesn't invest anymore. But if I'm profitable, still gets 50% of the profits for an entire year. Now I realize, and I stressed it really, really, really strongly in, inside the video that we might lose all of that money. I might lose all of my $1,000 um, that I'm putting every single month and you can lose your $2,000 that you're putting in every single month. I'm, I can't be sure this is going to succeed, but looking at the data online, looking at what other people did, we're looking at the market right now, taking into account the COVID and that, you know, e-commerce is booming, is growing and everything else. There's a high chance we could succeed, right? And then I took that video and I sent it to the first investor that I had in mind. And surely enough, the first investor that actually heard this plan was really happy to invest, like very excited actually to invest. So I ended up having from, from having only $1,000 budget per month to, to, to spend on this project from my own money. 
Now I had over 3000 or $3,000 for per month to spend on this project, which allowed me to spend about $100 per day on ads. Plus I had a little bit left over on Shopify and, and different apps that I needed to pay for. Now, $100 per day for 30 days, which is a month is $300. However, it's not like I'm going to be running ads consistently for 30 days because in the meantime, if I have not winning product, I'm going to stop those ads and then I'm going to create a new product page and then run ads again. So during the month, there will be a day or two or three that ads are not running. So I'm not spending $100 per day on ads, right? Which means that this leftover will cover the expenses of Shopify and different apps and stuff like that. Plus on top of that, I will make some money, right? I will make some sales like I did with this charger. So it will only go on top of what we both agreed to put into the business. So on average, I have about $100 a day to spend on ads plus money to cover Shopify and other apps. And I can just keep trying to grow this business. That's a huge benefit for me because it allows me to test a lot quicker, test products a lot quicker. And it gives me a little bit, a little bit more motivation. And it, it pushes me to think about this entire business and project a lot more seriously because now there is not only my money on the line, there's also someone else's money on the line. And I want to make sure that they receive their money back and even more like what I promised. I want them to get it. So there's even more motivation for me to get this to work. Now, listen, I realized that not all of us have no people who can just like that invest $2,000 a month on, on something that might not work out. But listen, what if you had only $10 a day from your own pocket to spend on this business? And you know what, in all honesty, most people would have, right? Because you could stop spending money on, I don't know, if you're smoking cigarettes, stop sp spending money on cigarettes, but stop spending money on fast foods, or at least spend less money on fast foods, spend less money on alcohol, sp spend less money on going out or whatever else you're spending on. Stop spending money on Netflix uh, or other games or whatever else you're spending money on. Every one of us or most of us will be able to spend five to $10 a day on this type of project, right? Now, if you can find in your friends, in your family, someone who is willing to match whatever you're selling uh, or actually double whatever you are putting into the business, uh, just like I did, right? So you, let's say, going to spend $10 a day, find someone who will want to spend $20 a day or maybe match you and spend also only $10 a day. But now suddenly you doubled your budget and you offered this person a return on their investment based on your profits, right? Now, the investor I talked to is giving twice as much money as I am. So I offered 50% of my profits. You could offer 25% of your profits, right? Depending on how much the investor would put into your business. Or you could find two investors, right? For example, if you have a friend and let's say your, your sibling, your brother or your sister that you want to get in touch with, right? So ask one of them for $10 a day and another one $10 a day and give them 25% of the of, of, of your profits each. So you're now giving away 20% 50% uh, of your profits, you're keeping 50% of the profits. But now you have cash, and you have more extra motivation to keep this thing going. Now, it might be tough going and asking people for money. But if you do it in the right way, that you're not just asking for money. If you show it, if, if you ask in a way that you really believe you can make it work and you're willing to give away a lot of your profits to these people, they will naturally want to jump on the train with you because most people do want to invest their money. They do want, they wish to have the business, right? Probably everyone you ask wish to have a business that gives them huge profits, that gives them a lot of money, right? But they don't know where to start. They don't know what is dropshipping. They don't know how to make money online. They don't know what business they could start. So if you are going to give them the opportunity to jump on the train with you, there's a high chance they will say yes if they have cash available, right? And like I said, everyone has a little bit of cash available if they wanted to. So money is there. All you need to do is just 
be willing to ask for it and do whatever you can to succeed and give it back 10 times or 20 times more. Right, so that's it for this video, guy, videos, guys. If you would like to find out like maybe in a little bit more details on how I prepared the spreadsheet for the investors, um, how I recorded this video, if you maybe you wanted to receive the the original video that I sent to the investors so that you can see how I did it, how I presented the offer uh, in order to secure this type of investment, make sure to comment down below. I'll be more than happy to release that as an additional video on this channel. But in the meantime, this is end of week number three. I'll see you in the next week and I'll tell you exactly what happened with this new product I'm testing. Take care.